Hey y'all and welcome back. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to check out another one of my videos. Today I'm excited to do another installment in my series where I look back on palettes that I reviewed in 2020 and I do a fun palette bingo with that month's palettes. So back in 2020 I was doing something where every single month I would review all the palettes that I tried out the month before. I still do that in a way but I, instead of doing it every month because it was a little bit too restrictive with trying to do it every single month I've changed it to do every 10 palettes. That's kind of how I've been doing it. But anyway back in 2020 I was doing it every single month and I started this series at the beginning of the year where I take those palettes that I reviewed and I do a fun multi-palette bingo with them just to be able to use the palettes again because I like being able to go back into my palettes every now and then and it's just a way to make it fun and interesting and you guys seem to really enjoy these videos and today we're going to be doing a maze. I almost said April but I think it's May. Yeah May 2020. I'll go ahead and stick the thumbnail here if you want to know what it looks like but I will leave the video the original video linked down below. You can still go over there and watch the reviews and hear all my thoughts if you would like to. Today it's not going to be focused on the reviews. It's just going to be having fun with the palettes and doing a fun palette bingo and just seeing what I can come up with random colors. So that's going to be the focus of today's video, but if you're curious to hear my thoughts, that'll be down below. Yeah, let's go ahead and zoom in closer and we can go ahead and randomly select the colors and then dive right into creating a fun look. Okay, so there is one palette that I'm not going to be able to use today, and it is the uh, Butter London Teddy Girl Palette. This came in at the bottom of my countdown for that month, and I did go ahead and declutter it. So I do not have it. Uh, my daughter doesn't even have it. I feel like I've been doing that a lot where she takes the palettes I declutter, and I've been going back into her collection and borrowing them for these videos, but I do not have this palette, so I will not be using that. So then moving on from there, we also have the Juvia's Place Wahala Palette. Let me go ahead and show you guys all the palettes, and then we'll run through and randomly select the colors. So we have the Juvia's Place Wahala Palette, which is a gorgeous, super Super fun palette if you forgot about it. That's it's been out for over a year at this point. Crazy. Um, next is going to be the I Heart Revolution Tasty Avocado palette. This palette I remember having so much fun with. A lot more fun than I thought. I remember getting this and thinking I wasn't gonna like it too much, but then I was super impressed with the formula, super impressed with the looks and whatnot. So I'm excited to use another shade from it. I also went back to the Melt Gemini palette this month and I used it several times or in the month of May 2020. So since I did use it that month and I did mention it in my review video. I figured that qualified for me to get to use it again in this video. So I'm super excited because you guys know how much I love the Melt Gemini. So we have that palette we're going to use today. And then we also have the Safari Rain. Oh my goodness, the Safari Rain palette. This gorgeousness of a palette. Absolutely love it. I'm so excited that I get to use it again, or use one shade at least from this palette. And then what else was there? I also had, okay, so this is a collection, but I did review it as a palette. So I wanted to go ahead and include it in today's video. But it is from Kristen Lee Cosmetics and it's her Mean Green collection. Collection. So here are all of the eyeshadows that you can purchase them individually. It was just a collection. However, I reviewed it as if it were a, a, like an all shimmer palette. So I'm going to be using it just like as if it was a palette. I lined it up in the way that Kristen Lee Cosmetics kind of lined it up when she initially like put them together and swatched them out for her website. So that's how I have them all organized. And I am super excited to get to try one of these again today because I really did enjoy her formula. I've used her formula in these shadows since reviewing it originally in any of my duping a fake palette video and I always love the quality it's so very pretty so yeah that's what we're gonna use today so now how many is that one two three four five I'm gonna pick one shadow from each and then my rule is I have to use those shadows that I picked out but then after that I can add and take from any palette that I want to complete a look so as long as I use the five that I picked today one from each of these palettes then I can incorporate whatever I feel like so now that that's out of the way let's go ahead and do some randomly generated numbers or randomly generated colors and I just go to random.org not too fancy I just type in random.org and I just use the Google screen that pops up on my phone and let's go ahead and do the Wahala palette so here is once again what the Wahala palette looks like there's one two three four five twenty shadows there are three pressed glitters so my fingers are crossed that I do not get them let me go ahead and input here we have 20 and then generate seven so we have one two three four five six seven Oh my goodness, <laughs> it's not a glitter, so I should be thankful. Look at me complaining, but it's definitely a very, a very, uh, very light, almost nude type of mauve color. Oh, I should have cleaned out my nails really good. I was in the garden. I am so sorry. Hang on one moment, please. Okay, I cleaned up a little bit, but I really should just remember to wear gloves because I just have a bad habit of not putting my gloves on and then like now regretting it because dirt is so hard to get out of underneath your fingernails and even around the edges. Anyway, getting back on track, there's the color. Can you see it? No, this is like probably the boringest shadow in this whole palette. Like, look how many beautiful colors. And I got that one. 
we'll do something with it. I mean, that'll be easy. That will be a very easy shade to throw in somewhere because it's almost inconsequential. Anyway, moving on, let's do the tasty avocado palette. And for this one, again, here's what it looks like. We have 18 shadows. So I'm gonna type in 18. Let me set this down, 18 and generate. To generate, we have eight. Sometimes I can't tell if it actually generates. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is a really pretty color guacamole, a matte green. You could definitely use that. I'm curious, I feel like I'm gonna end up with a very green look. Although I guess that makes sense because all the colors are like grungy green, so I'm cool with that. The only one that had the colorful pop options was <laughs> the Wahala palette, and I got a very boring color there. Anyway, moving on. Let's go ahead and do the Melt Gemini palette and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. We got ten shadows here, so I'm gonna go ahead and input that. Ten and generate. We have five. So one, two, three, four, five. This brown right here called Cupcake, if you were curious. Ooh, that feels so nice. Let's go ahead and swatch it right there. Very, very pretty. Very nice. Okay, let's keep on moving. Safari Rain, I'm so excited to get to use this. Again, it's been so long. Let me go ahead and input nine and generate. We have seven. So we have six, seven right here. It's Lioness. It's a gold color. Very pretty shadow. It's kind of hoping for the shimmer green, but we'll see. Oh, well, we're going to get a shimmer green with the, um, oh wait, down here. I almost covered the, I almost covered the mob because I couldn't even see it. Um, but we're going to get a shimmer green with the Kristen Lee cosmetics bundle. So that's a good, that's going to be a really pretty combination. Almost like a mint chocolate chip is what I'm seeing kind of develop except for that, that mob. Okay. I'll drop it. Next up, last up, we have the Kristen Lee cosmetics mean green collection. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, twelve. 12. So let me go ahead and input 12. Generate, we have six. One, two, three, four, five, six. This shade here, is this the one that's, I don't think so, let me see what it's called. This is Triumph, I think I remember liking Triumph. There was one shade in here that I wasn't the biggest fan because it was very, kind of just like a sheer wash of color, very sparkly, but very sheer-ish. Oh yeah, that has nice color. It's not swatching the best because it's on my arm here, so sorry for that, but oof, that's pretty. That'll go really nice in the outer corner. So. I feel like this is gonna be a really easy look together. I think I'm gonna focus the green in the crease and then I'm gonna have the brown on the outer corner. Maybe I'll kind of give it a really nice winged out look. And then the gold and the green are going to be on the lid. Gold first, green next, I think. Or maybe, yeah, I'll do that. I feel like that'll be good. And then um, the mauve, do I even care where I put it? It's just so very light, like does it matter? I'll probably use the mauve to blend out the outer edges of the brown. There we go, nice and simple. I'm gonna go clean off my fingers because I'm already making a mess and then we can get started. Okay, so I just used a bit of the Clean Canvas Eye Base from Gerard Cosmetics and now we can move on to the eye look. So I'm gonna use the brown, which was, oh my goodness, I gotta, I can't remember. The Melt Gemini is what we're gonna use. I feel a little washed out. Okay, I played around with a little bit, but we're just gonna keep on moving. I'm going to grab, let's go with this brush. I usually use this for like shimmer eyeshadows, but I'm going to use this to use that brown and I'm gonna put on my outer corner in a very winged out V shape. And we'll see how that looks. I just feel like this is a nice deep brown. Maybe not quite deep enough for what I have in mind, but that's okay. We're just gonna have fun with today's look and see what happens. Kind of putting it on and winging it out because I want to blend the brown. I'm going for a very mint chocolate chip type of look. I think that'll be pretty. I feel like I haven't done it in a long, long time. I think it's really cool that all of the colors, all the palettes in today's video kind of go so well together. Like it's a very easy, <laughs> I almost feel bad how easy this one is because so many of the palettes were like that grungy type of green or at least a green themed palette. And the only wild card was the Wahala because it had so many other colors. But like I said, I got one that almost doesn't matter where I put it. Like worst case, I'm just gonna smudge it under my lower lash line with something and call it a day because it's just so, it's so light. I'm pretty sure I could use it as a brow bone, but it is pinky leaning, leaning so I'm not going to use it as a brow bone highlight just because I don't have pink undertones, so I feel like it'll look a little a little odd. It won't really blend into my skin very well. Okay, so this is what we're doing. I had meant to just wing out, but we came up because I don't know. I was talking, so <laughs> let me catch this side up and then we'll move on and see if I totally ruined the look or if I ruined my original idea or what. 
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and I didn't think I would do it this soon, but I am gonna go ahead and jump in with a little blending brush. This is the E42, and I'm gonna go into that mauve shade in the Wahala palette. I'm gonna go ahead and blend out the outer edges just to get a better feel for this look. It's such a pale, such a pale mauve tone. Let's see how much of it shows up. But like I said, even if it doesn't really show up, I do wanna just use it as a diffuser because the, um, the melt, is so intense and pigmented, I tend to go a little too heavy handed with my shadows and therefore I'll, it'll just get out of hand and I'll the dark color way too far. So I'm gonna try to see if using this to blend out just the outer edge to soften it up helps. And I feel like right now, is it blending it out? I don't know, I feel like it's just giving a wash of color, but maybe this will help me smooth it out. We'll see, I'm gonna try. I think I'm just too heavy handed when it comes to working with colors in general because I feel like I'm just always like, I see a color, boom, I put it down too intense. And then you see people like professionals doing it and they're just so light and uh, just very delicate and just gently blending it in. And I don't know, I don't think I have the patience nor the time to spend that long, but I'm gonna try here because I definitely need to blend this out a little bit more. And I think the mob will help, but it's not doing exactly what I wanted. It's not blending out the edges, it's just kind of like covering the shadow. It, it needs to be a little bit darker, I think, to, to be the blend that I was hoping for. Again, I feel like the mob is a little inconsequential, but it will work for this look. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to bring this out a little bit more. I kind of want it to look sharp. Okay, so I'm liking how it looks so far. Um, let me go ahead and pick another kind of... Uh, Let's go ahead and use something like this. This is Wayne Goss 20. Yeah, I think that'll do. Maybe a little, me and my indecisiveness. I'm gonna go ahead and do the ref for 13. And I'm going to pick up this green right there, which was from the Avocado palette. And it was guacamole. That shade right there. And I'm going to go ahead and place this on the inner half and bring it up. Oh, I remember having so much fun with this palette. It's definitely more of like a pastel bright green I don't know. And the reason I'm pointing that out is because I feel like avocado is like a very grungy color. Like if you look at a fresh avocado, like the outside's so dark and brown and green, and then the inside's a very grungy type of green. So I think that's the only disconnect that I saw with this palette is that it just wasn't the colors I really expected or the looks that I got weren't really like avocado-esque because there is such a heavy, heavy emphasis on like a blue green. But still, it, I thought the quality was really nice. And the different looks that I got were really pretty and the shimmers I remember enjoying. That mob actually does work out. I think uh, after I kind of figured out to not try to blend it into the brown, but place it above the brown to help with the blend, I feel like I'm much happier with how that looks. So I'm just gonna take this green and kind of marry it right there very gently so it doesn't get funky and then just work on diffusing the edges. Okay, I'm gonna go back into that mauve color, put it right there on top, blend and diffuse, and then go back into the brown in the Gemini. I do a lot of back and forth. If you haven't noticed, I'm sure you've noticed if you've been watching my channel for a while, but I feel like I'm just kind of go, always going back and forth, doing a little bit here, a little bit there. Partly because I'm always scared that I'm gonna totally ruin a look, so I just move so slowly sometimes. Yeah, at the same time, I just talked about just being too hasty, but I don't know, sometimes I feel overconfident and I'm putting piling it on too heavy, and then I realize that and I overcorrect by being way too slow. Like now, once I get all these colors that I'm like, oof, I better slow down and move very slowly. There we go. I like how that blend looks. Perfect. Okay, let's move on to the lid. I'm gonna put some glitter glue on it really quick. Okay, so I think I'm gonna put down the green first and then do the gold because I'm gonna kind of cut the gold out or should I do the gold? I'm gonna do the green first. Yes, I'm always second guessing myself. But anyway, the color that we have was Triumph. Oh, I remember this being like a super sparkly type of shadow. We'll do this first, because if it's super dark, then I might want to have more gold on the lid than anticipated. But if it's light enough, then I think I'll do more gold to really make the two greens, this green here and then the green on the inside, make those really pop out. Ooh, so pretty. It's been so long since I've used this collection or one of her shadows, but Kristen Lee knows how to make a sparkly shadow so well. Okay, like that, I like it. And I'm just gonna kinda soften out here. I'll add more brown after I'm all done to make sure the uh, 
the edge where the shimmer meets the matte is nice and seamless but like can you guys see all that sparkle i don't know if you can but in person so much sparkle is happening on my lid and i like it okay i definitely forgot about how much fallout you get when uh putting the shimmers on but now that i see it i do remember saying that it's best to use kristen lee cosmetics shimmers before completing your face makeup which in my case is a little bit too late since my face makeup is already done for today, but oh well. I think I'm just gonna have to brace the uh, the glittery under, under eyes for the rest of the day. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab another flat brush. This is the E56 using lots of Sigmas today, Sigma E56. I'm gonna go into the Safari Rain and I'm going to take Lioness, which this is a little bit um, like softly pressed, so I wanna be careful picking it up that I don't to get too much and it get too crumbly. This would be really pretty as well if I, want, if I had done like a brighter green on the lid. This gold also makes a beautiful inner corner highlight. Oof, that gold is so strong. Yeah, it's pretty lightly pressed, so I prefer to kind of work slow to spread it out because it's like um, very soft and crumbly, if that makes sense. Like not crumbly in a bad way. They remind me of Odin's Eyes shimmers. They're like really pigmented kind, not their like sheer wash of color kind. Uh, if that helps you at all, they're just a little bit flaky, I guess. But you can lay them down and smooth them out and they're not... They're not flaky on the lid, but to put them on, they're just kind of like loose and flaky. Okay, going back to the Kristen Lee shadow, I'm going to just blend on top of there a little bit. And whenever I do this, it's just like a little war that happens, or a little battle that happens on my eyes, I feel like, because the two colors that I'm meshing together just go back and forth. Like I put the green back over the gold a little bit, and then I go back in with the gold and put it back with the green, and then I just stop whenever I feel like it looks pretty seamless. And there, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so I thought the last color with the uh, the green from Kristen Lee gave me a lot of fallout, but oh my goodness, that gold also gave me a crazy amount of fallout. So yeah, I think my face is pretty much unsalvageable at this point. Why did I say that word so weird? Let me try a different powder to see if a little bit heavier powder might help conceal, because over here is just out of hand. It's not my favorite thing, so yeah. Definitely something that I'd rather do my face or my eyes first than my face afterwards. I have glitter all the way down to here, which just looks like I have glitter boogers and I'm not really a fan of it. Anyway, what you're gonna do? We're gonna keep moving. Let's go ahead and do the lower lashes and then um, inner eye, inner corners. And then I'm going to put on a brown liner because I think that'll look really pretty. Okay, so I think I should keep brown on the lower lash line just to tie it all together. But I want to go green, but I don't know if I should go just the green that we already picked or a different green. Hmm. I think I'm gonna go a little bit more of a grungy green. I think that was another issue I had. Oh, that's not too close. But there are definitely shades in here that I felt like were super duper close, like you could have condensed the um, palette down a little bit. I'm gonna do it because I keep looking at it, but I'm gonna take the green Congo Basin underneath here. I'm gonna do it on the inner half, and then I'm just gonna use the same brown on my outer corner directly, like on the very outer corner, just to tie it all back. But I'm gonna use mainly that Congo Basin from the um, Safari Rain palette on my lower lash line because I keep looking at it and I'm like no you can use something else But it was one of my favorite shades from that palette. So Let's just use it instead of constantly looking at it and thinking about using it So I'm just using the brown which is cupcake if you forgot from the um, Gemini palette just like that just to touch it around and then as I said I'm just gonna take Congo Basin and I'm gonna go right underneath Maybe not the best decision, but like I said, <laughs> I just really want to use this shade, can you tell? Okay, so inner corner, let's do it. I want to take the brightest shadow and just like super blinding for my inner corner. Um, was there anyone that stood out to me in the Wahala palette? Not really, the brightest one is this one. And it's very purple leaning, it's like a blue purple. I don't think it will really go with this look at all. Then we have the Gemini. No, this is the lightest shimmer, but it's very pinky toned and super loose. I didn't like using an inner corner, just too loose. Um, this one, like I said, this was a really nice inner corner highlight. This one is also super blinding, but it's too dark. Yeah, it's more of a taupe, too dark. And then the gold is darker than the gold I put on my lid. So I feel like that's not gonna go. So it's gonna be down to Avocado, which has several lighter shades. Ugh, just smack myself in the eye. It's got several lighter shades, so I could use this one. It looks a little bit loose, though. It's like a blue, 
a blue type of green. Um, oh, maybe pear, was it? This one that was really pretty. That's got a nice sheen to it. Then it has this one here as well. See, those are so close. You could use one or the other. Um, I would use a smoother one to put right next to my eye. So I might do pear. I feel like that's the one I'm leaning towards the most. The blue, it kind of takes away from the whole look of it. I feel like I need to keep to green. Not so much strong blue. And then let's see, in here, there are definitely some pretty ones. Let's see. There is, I'm leaning towards, what am I looking at? I'm leaning towards this one right here. Ooh, that's so pretty. Let me show. It's hard to show just because I don't know the name of it. Mojito. And then also, I just like this because it's such a bright green. Bitter is just like a blinding type of green. It's so pretty. And then also this shade right here, Enlightened Mint. Let me clean off my finger from the previous shade. And it's right there. So I think I'll do one of Kristen Lee's because like this is the avocado one and then these are Kristen Lee's. I just feel like the shine is so much more intense. So this is again a pretty blue leaning. This is very, very green. I think I'm going to go with this one just because it goes with the look the most. What was that? That's the problem to remember what it was. It was the first one I swatched. I think it was this one right here. Mojito. I think that's what it was. Oh, there's also Savvy. Let me look at Savvy really quick. I always forget about this one. That's pretty. Oh, this is pretty. Maybe I'll do Savvy. Let me look at Mojito again. So there's Mojito and Savvy. Oh, I don't know, they're both so pretty. Let's go ahead and just do Savvy because I feel like it goes with the look. This one, and it's also, um, Mojito is like super intensely colorful and I don't want it to be, I mean, I don't mind color, obviously for my inner corner highlight, I do it a lot, but I like it to be more shine and more intense shine and very brightening when it comes to my inner corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go with Savvy. That's what we're gonna do, pick it up carefully on my brush and let's pop it right here. I might need to wet this to make it kind of stick. Not stick, but like a smooth down because it's definitely a crumbly shade when I'm trying to pick it up with such a tiny brush, but we're getting there. There we go. I just don't have any patience apparently. Okay, that's pretty. Lots of sparkle. All right, I'm gonna try desperately to somehow cover the, uh, the sparkle on my under eyes for a bit and then I am going to go ahead and line my eyes or uh, like wing out my eyeliner and put on some mascara and then we, we can come back and do the outro of this video and per usual I will show you guys close ups and all that stuff so be right back. Alright so here's the completed look. I really like how it turned out. I definitely think the gold is a bit of interest because without the gold I feel like it's just a you know mint chocolate chip vibe. It's very pretty but just I don't know just like a standard mint chocolate chip type of eyeshadow look but with the gold it pops of something just a little bit different and a little bit more interesting and I really like how it turned out. I have actually been itching to do a mint chocolate chip inspired eyeshadow look for a little while now so I'm super excited that I just happened to get to do that today with this Pella Bingo but yeah I feel like I got such an easy color choice this time like usually if you've never seen one of my palette bingos I have a whole playlist you're welcome to binge and check out all the different times I've done this because sometimes boy are they hard but I'm not joking when I say that I think today with this look it was the easiest palette bingo I've literally ever done and the most seamless because it looks it looks like it came off from one palette is that seamless and as much as I harped on that super pale mauve tone shade it did work out really nicely to blend out the outer edges of that brown and I love how it turned out it's just got a really nice finish to it very very pretty very smoked out and softened and yeah oh I didn't say but I put in this LA girls pastel dreams this is in the color magic mint I was trying to find a color closer to the greens that I used on my lid but that was the closest I had so I went with it and yeah Oh my goodness, this is such a fun look. This is a look that I wish I had another video that I could have time to record because I enjoy it so much. I kind of want to document it with another video instead of just at the end of this video. But I took some pictures. I'll post them on Instagram eventually and that I can document it there. But yeah, I really like how it turned out. So yeah, May 2020, that was a fantastic month. All of these palettes were so much fun to re-dip back into. And I didn't have issues with any of them, like blending and all that. They all blended so beautifully together, showed up so well. The mattes were fantastic. These shimmers, both of the shimmers that I got are so sparkly. True, I look like, you know, uh, Edward Collins down here on my face because I am so very shiny and sparkly from all the fallout. However, my eyes are very sparkly and shifty and shiny and as I move, there's just so much sparkle reflect going on. It is gorgeous. So I do enjoy it as much as I harp on the fallout. It is very pretty on my lids. But yeah, that is going to do it for today's video. Thank you guys so very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to let me know that down below in the comments and stay tuned because I try to do these about every month. So 
next time it's going to be the palettes that I reviewed in June of 2020 and I'll do a palette bingo with all those. If you want to go ahead and take a peek ahead, you can go down to my palette bingo playlist and find June 2020 and see what palettes I'll be using next time. I try not to look ahead just to keep myself surprised. But if you want to look ahead, you are of course welcome to. And as I said, I will put the video where I originally reviewed all of these palettes down below in the description box if you want to hear my thoughts on any of them. And yeah, with all that said, per usual, I'm over on Instagram. I'm LadyKD92 over there if you want to follow me and see some reels, up close eye pictures, flat lays, all that sort of thing. LadyKD92 is where I'm at. And with all that said, I'll see you guys very soon in my next video. Bye guys.